there everybody and welcome back to another Blunder tutorial. Today we are on part 4 of the Blunder River Generator. If you haven't seen the other parts, check them out. Uh, but long story short, uh, what we have so far is we have a curve that makes a path that has a coordinate system and we use that coordinate system to generate these waves um, that make it feel like there's a bit of a flow uh, to this. And what I want to talk about in this part is kind of emphasizing the realism of this uh, river uh, by adding in, and I'll show you what we're making in a second, uh, by adding in some foam on the sides, um, procedurally, of course. So you can see uh, this foam uh, flows on the sides. Uh, we're also going to add foam for uh, the middle. We're also going to add foam for where there's rocks eventually. Uh, but for now, I just want to kind of set up our foam on the sides. And this looks super cool. I keep doing the uh, circle example, but it works with any curve, right? It looks super cool with the circle because it lines both sides. Uh, so what I want to do is delete this and uh, show you uh, how to do foam. Let's do it. By the way, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. So uh, the foam you could do either in geometry nodes or in shader nodes. I'd recommend doing it as a shader uh, because we can do it fast and it doesn't have that much of a computation as compared to simulating this kind of in a sense with ge uh, geometry nodes. Uh, so, if we want foams, foam to be on the edges, we want the coordinate system, uh, especially the part that tells us how far across the uh, river we are. Uh, that is going to be U2, if you remember, uh, going across. Uh, what I want to do with this is I want to make a mask that says, here there's foam, uh, here there's not. Uh, to do this, I'm going to start off with a noise texture. This is going to be the basis for our foam. Take the noise texture, make it high contrast so that there's clear areas that are black and clear areas that are white. White is going to mean foam. Take the scale, bring it up, and, you know, add a bit of roughness. This is the basis of foam. You can make it look better, and we will. Um, again, we want to use the coordinate system related to this curve, so I'm going to use this as the vector. Um, and the cool thing about this is if we vector math addition, uh, we can flow on the x-axis, so our foam actually flows. So I'm just going to do hash frame. If you didn't see what I did there, I typed in hashtag frame divided by 100 um, is going to give us a hundredth of the speed of every frame refresh, right? So if we're on frame 100, it's going to give us a value of 1, 200, 2, etc. Um, okay, so let's work on this foam a little. Um, I'm thinking we're going to add some distortion. And I'm thinking we're also going to have this evolve over time uh, because the foam bubbles collapse and you form and all this. Uh, so I'm going to evolve this by a big number, a big divisor, because it goes super fast by like 500. And that looks okay. Uh, to have this only be on the sides, again, we want to use the U2 parameter. Uh, so I'm going to separate that, or I guess we already have it separated. What do I want to do? I guess... So here's the idea, and I'm going to show you this first, and then I'll tell you what we're actually going to do. So what we want to do is isolate the uh, center, so or uh, isolate the edges, rather. So I'm just going to make two white points, and in the middle of the color ramp, which is the middle of the river, it's going to be black, right? Um, we can do one here, and one on the other side, uh, just to get, you know, the edges isolated, right? This is what we're going to do, but it's kind of like too perfect, right? There's a nice crisp edge. Uh, so what I'd like to do is mix this with some noise. Um, so that's why I'm not going to do this immediately. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to make a new coordinate system that mixes this with a bit of uh, noise uh, just to break up the pattern a, a little. So we're going to take a noise texture, and then we're going to feed it through the color ramp. And make sure the noise texture is also using the flow source and set this to linear light. This is just a trick, uh, one of the oldest tricks in the book. Connect this, view it, and now we should have it so, especially if we make this uh, smaller. Or I guess one thing is we want to separate the Y component. So I'm, instead of just taking the U2, I'm taking the Y component uh, with a bit of noise mixed in. Right? So I've taken this coordinate system and I said, hey, uh, mix it We're using linear light with some other stuff. And this is going to break up our edges a little. Um, I guess what I also want to do is also have this evolve over time. So I'm going to do another addition on the x-axis and have it flow 
um, maybe at a different speed than the foam, just so there's a bit of variety. So maybe 200. So it flows slowly as compared to the noise texture. Okay. So I'm thinking what we can do now is we just multiply these masks together. And in theory, we'll see in practice, but in theory, yep, that should give us foam only on the edges. And now the question is, one, how do we incorporate it? And two, how do we make it look better? Starting off with looking better, I want to add detail to our mask for the, um, the noise. I'm going to add a bit of roughness and a, bon a bunch of distortion. And you want to play with the scale. I'm not sure exactly what scale looks the best, uh, but we'll find out. So something like that, big factor for big uh, noise things, and it will naturally create some like lines and stuff that make it look more like intentional. Um, I think that's good. Um, and we want to incorporate this into our water material. And I think the easiest way to do that is to do it as a mix of color and normal mapping and roughness and all this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a factor to mix the color. So I'm just copying my original color. If you didn't know, you can hover control C and then control V to paste. I'm going to have my foam be perfectly white, desaturated, and I'm going to have my water be a bit darker. Connect that. So now you can kind of see the foam, but it's still perfectly reflective and all this. Uh, what I want to do is have it keep the property. So I'm going to connect this to roughness is what I'm saying. Black is the water, meaning that it's going to be reflective. White is the foam, which is going to have a roughness of one. That makes it more visible too. And I think finally, we add a tiny bit of bump as a bit of a cheat. This will generate some normal mapping for us procedurally. And I think we connect that there. Make it maybe half the strength. And now we have foam that I think looks pretty realistic. We're going to work on it. Uh, that goes on the edges. Uh, what do I want to do? I want the foam to be more visible. So to do that, I think we just control our foam mask. So here you can see it's really starting to uh, pop off, pop out. And you can make the foam kind of bubbly by uh, breaking it up uh, with the color ramp. So something like that. Um, I'm also thinking our scale is a bit too, we need to make our scale bigger. So there's more dense foam. Uh, what else? So I'm just playing with parameters until it feels right. I feel like the foam should probably actually be moving at the same speed as the thing. So let's have it go faster. So we're going to add instead of 100, let's make it 50. Is this what I want? The foam's moving fast, but the mask isn't. So I'm going to move this to 75. And now it feels like it's flowing with it a bit more. Um, another thing we can do is I do want there to be foam in the middle, just not as much. Uh, so a quick trick. Oh, by the way, it should also not be transmissive, the foam. But this is a cool little render, so you can see kind of the modeling and all this. Uh, it shouldn't be transmissive. So I think what we can do is, unlike roughness, we invert this uh, mask through the color. And this will make it so that most of this is white. In other words, transmission equal to 1. And some areas are going to be black. In other words, transmission equal to 0. And that should make the foam really pop. There we go. Now we can actually see the foam. And this begs the question, should we make it look a little less intense? Something like that. You can uh, play around with the color ramps until you're happy with it. Uh, but remember, uh, how far it is to the edge can be controlled uh, with these uh, sliders. And we can make it less intense, something like this. Just so it's there, but it isn't like punchy. And you can also make the uh, middle have foam if you wanted to, uh, which is interesting, right? So add a bit of a swirl there. So this is what it would look like if we had maximum foam. It would just like be crazy. Uh, I'm just going to do the tiniest bit amount of foam just to add a bit of detail. OK. Anything else I want to change about this foam before we continue? Strength probably should bring that down so it's less intense and we get our reflective water back. And I think that is it. Let's do, of course, the water test or the extension test. The extension test is where we just kind of add random uh, curvature to this and see how it looks. So I'm just making a river that looks pseudo possible. 
and let's see what that looks like. So you can see it's flowing along the thing, and of course it should be. Yeah, that looks nice. And again, uh, you can add uh, more foam, uh, you know, in different places and control this. What I'm interested in now is making rocks uh, with foam trailing uh, behind them. I think that would look uh, interesting. Let me scale this on the Z a little. This water is going uphill somehow, and then it's going downhill, which makes a bit more sense. Um, okay. Uh, let me just delete these extra vertices now that we did the uh, test. Whoops, I guess this one should be here. And I'm rotating this. Whoops. And here is our little river segment. By the way, uh, there's no reason you can't like draw uh, one of these. Um, I think we should probably project from the XY plane. Uh, you can just draw a river that uh, inherits these properties, uh, which is kind of the point. Uh, so, anything else I want to do here? I don't think so. I think maybe maybe we could make the foam like a little less intense, right? So I, I can just multiply this by... If it's zero, there's no foam. If it's one, there's a lot of foam. I'll make it 75% strength instead of 100. And uh, there you go. That is how we do the foam on the sides. Uh, in the next part, we're either going to talk about rocks or maybe some like bigger waves uh, we can add as well. I'm not quite sure. We could have swirling pools and stuff like this. Uh, we'll figure it out. By the way, it's always good to test this with different HDRIs, different lighting conditions, uh, just to see what you get. And just to test out if the normal mapping is too intense, which I think it is. Um, but that, that's just a, a thing. Um, so uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys on part five.